Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, so right. Thanks for your time. Nah, thank you for your time, buddy. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Man. Where are you? Are you in uh, New South Wales, are you? Or... Yeah, yeah. I'm in, uh, in Sydney, just kind of on the south side of Sydney. So this is my, my little pad where things happen. Wow, <laughs> like a rock star, mate. <laughs> <laughs> where about to you? I'm Perth, mate. In Perth. So, yeah. In Perth? Yeah, it's freezing up here right now, mate. Yeah. 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 I know. It's it's pretty cold here too. <laughs> yeah. hey, I love it over there. We just Sorry? did three weeks. I love it over there. We did three weeks uh, at the start of the year. Yep. Um, up and down the Western Australia coast. It was uh yeah, it's just beautiful. It's a special place. You and Mo just went to performing in Fremantle a couple of months ago. Yeah, we 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 wanted to try and uh do Western Australia like post release of the album, but we um we'd been scheduled to play Nanup Festival um many times across COVID and and so uh we had to build a tour. You know, as you know, when getting all the way over from Sydney to to Western Australia is expensive and a bit of a trek. So we kind of had to just, you know, accept the the differences of timing and just uh yeah, create a tour around Nanup to make it make it all worthwhile. And um it was such a great experience. Absolutely loved it. Hey, I can't believe that you are actually younger than me well you will always be younger than me but you've gone so much in life and you're only 40 years old someone commented on my um facebook that meant it's all grown up well that was 30 years ago do you get that a lot yeah i mean i uh i mean i suppose i'm just living my life and and i don't really know any better but uh, occasionally you know the way that somebody may word it uh, it'll, it, it can make me stop and go, yeah, I have, I have done a lot. Like, I think the, yeah, uh, there was a real sort of a moment when we did Australian story, um, because they, they needed me to kind of put dates to some of the things that I had done. And so I had this list in front of me that was given to me. And so th- seeing that list, I mean, very rarely do you kind of take stock of your life and I think people should and I I try to now just to appreciate progress a little better um but I looked at that list and I remember just so many of those things happened over one to two years and I'm like god that did I go from there to there in one year and then here and then here and and there was just it was just jam-packed within like the space of one to two years and um but yeah I think I think it's important, yeah, to to every now and then just stop and uh, remember what you've done and and the challenges you've overcome as well. Good advice. Hey, congratulations on your latest album, Miracles. There's a bit of eclectic mix, isn't there, with rock, blues, ballads? Yeah, I mean, I I just wanted to create something that that was true. I mean, my last album, Demons, came about when I had a... I was sort of coming off the other side of a, of a big sort of mental health <laughs> um, uh, challenge where I was challenged with my mental health for about four or five years. And I didn't think I'd, I'd be able to play and, and tour. And, and so I, I, I at least got back to that place of writing music, just self-expression, you know, it wasn't about whether I was going to release it or how it was going to do or whether people are going to like it. It was kind of like how I wrote music or created music when I was a kid again. Um, but having said that, it was a time of rediscovery, me still trying to kind of find find myself. And and there there was some hesitance there. There were times where I, I, I was probably overrun a little bit by my insecurities. And uh, But this album, the space in which I created this was more about, all right, you've, you've learned enough. It's time to leap. It's time to act, have a bit more faith. Uh, and, uh, and in order to do that, I wanted to create something that was true, which meant I had to just take on every single self doubt, uh, elements of self doubt and, and, um, uh, and just, and be bold. And so now when I listen back to this album, as it is, I, I genuinely am proud of it because it's, I can hear, (laughs) I can hear how bold I had to be in and, and what I had to face in order to get it. You spoke about demons and now miracles. Is that the reason why you 
call your current album miracles because you have destroyed your previous demons so to speak it's it's funny you're the second person who has uh over an interview has met uh, has um questioned the link between the name of the last album and and the name of this album and to be honest obviously maybe it was it's a subconscious thing you know and I, I find that beautiful i love it when you make a decision and then you look back on it and go wow that's related to this and it's like deep down you sort of knew it and you just didn't consciously understand it i i just actually just called the album miracles as uh and it was working outwards from the song miracles and i felt like um it it just you know i mean if we talk about the sentiment of the song the song i came about during covid where i was getting really tired and at times angry with the constant bombardment of bad news and as much as what what it was important we needed to be informed about that stuff it was almost just uh warping my sense of the world and reality as a whole and i had to consistently remind myself and widen that lens to include everything in the experience all right these things are happening here the most of these things are not happening actually here they're just precautions uh, but this is these are the everyday good things that are happening all the simple things like just to just to keep myself even sane and gr uh, grounded in reality and i remember asking my um, myself the question what if what if we brought attention to the everyday the simple good things that happen even your everyday miracles that you just can't explain because a lot of it is like the fear of the unknown and then i kept saying to myself well the unknown often reveals itself to be fine you know and, and so then I, I started to think about my kids, I, uh, you know, and, and, and one of the biggest miracles for me is just, is childbirth, you know, and, um, and, and, and at times I feel like it's trivialized. Like it's just, oh yeah, it just, you know, it happens every day. Let's just pop one out and go back to work. And, you know, it's uh, to me, uh, that cover art, I chose that cover up because it was a reminder of an everyday miracle that's been happening since humans are being on the planet. Um, and then it's also a moment when love seems to transcend fear because there's so much risk and there's so many fears that go along when you, you, when, when the mother is delivering and fears for the father, uh, from the father's perspective as well. But that, that love <laughs> is the reason why you get, why they have so much strength to be able to see that experience through the love for the baby, love for life itself. And then the, from the baby's point of view, it's, it's that desire to want to live, you know? So, um, and I use that as an anchor and I feel like, um, miracles as a whole, as a concept is, a, is a really good anchor for me, even just psychologically. Maybe your next album could be, fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, probably. You know, I I actually am starting to feel like the next body of work that I create will probably uh, sit in a different space and be a, a little lighter. This is a deep album. It's a pretty. I mean, we bang like there's a few songs on there that are tongue and cheek and you know and a lot of fun and all that. But there, yeah, we definitely go to some some deep places. That's for sure. <laughs> so so let's talk about your first track of the album, Corencia. I hope I pronounce it correctly. And it means that it's a place where you draw strength from. It could be from underneath a tree or it could be a path to a forest. Where's your Carencia? Yeah, Carencia. I mean, the, 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 the con the, what drew me towards that word was, was its origins in bullfighting and, and how the bull uh, goes into this, this space of Carencia uh and it's obvious within the arena when that happens and and it's a place where it goes within itself to draw strength it's like a, it's a it's a place of refuge and it's also the most dangerous time to attack a bull and i just thought that was beautiful because i love that metaphor how there's so much chaos happening and so you know uh so much adversity that's happening to that bull that still despite that situation that the bull has a way to be able to draw strength right and and when you when you look at that from a human's perspective is that we can be in a state of chaos where things are just it feels like the world is just you know coming down on us and that currency for me um is within here it's 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 how i focus my attention it's um it's that quiet sort of um those those that 
that almost sort of quiet and peace that might be deep down within yourself. Uh, it's anchor. It's, it's, um, I mean, it's not, it's not for me so much about, uh, having a thing like an external thing to create that currency, but it's, it's, it's something that I can take with me wherever I am in, in whatever situation. And, um, I'm still working on it, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I felt like that it was a very liberating concept. Let's talk about the next track. One of my favorite ones, Gone to God. He has that late seventies buoyancy nostalgic to it. Reminds me of the Eric Carmen Boss Cags sort of feeling to it. But when I read the lyrics, it is quite dark, disturbed and depressing. But your vocals it's quite pacifying, hey. It's almost acquiescing. It's very contrasting. What's the take on that? Is it meant to be a sad song? Or a song of comfort? Yeah, it's I love that mix. There's that that paradox, that contrast. Um I when I originally wrote that song and I played it on the guitar, I thought, wow, this is a sad song. Um, but the concept itself came from me questioning my own beliefs around mortality and my own spirituality. And I had worked out that I had let science dictate my spiritual beliefs and which was a complete contrast to what I, what I felt when I was a kid. Ironically, I was having mortality issues as an adult, but I never had them as a kid, even though I was battling leukemia because I had this, this wonderment, this kind of, this belief that was, that actually made uh, life just so much easier and, and, and to be able to face, uh, those situations with a little bit more lightness and a little bit more, you know, I suppose faith. So I, I think it was the contrast comes from a deep topic, but I was inspired by my youth. Yep. Um, and, and I, then I brought those together and, and, and that was a real goal for me. I didn't want it to be from the perspective of the lost adult, I wanted it to be a mix. The lost adult that's been inspired by, you know, the um, uh, by the the energy of 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 my old my my younger self, the child. So, and that's 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 what you're hearing there. Right. Very interesting. Actually. Hey, um, so can we go back to the days of uh, Steve Bison and Barry Bissell, Tick Forty, Australia, mate? Oh yeah, hey, hey, it's Saturday and stuff like that. So, you were signed to the likes of Michael Jackson, and there was a bidding war between Prince and Madonna, and you toured with BB King, who dubbed you as the future of blues music. So, how was it like, you know, to, as a ten-year-old boy, having the world at his feet? Must be really surreal, isn't it? Yeah, it's um well, you know, kids just they they didn't when you're a kid you don't really know any better. Life is life and I I didn't really understand how what an epic situation I was in <laughs> at all. I mean, I'd I life for me was never just normal because, you know, I was I was battling leukemia early on, then I I get to meet my idol Mark Knopfler in the UK. Uh, because of the Starlight Foundation, and then I'm, you know, doing the, all yeah these appearances on TV and performances, and you know all of that gave me a sense of purpose and fire while I was dealing with leukemia at the at the time, and uh, I, I suppose it 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 was all just this big <laughs> big bundle of joy, and and you know there was definitely pressure at times, uh, but my parents kept me grounded. Um, there was, I felt very anchored and it was a lot of love around, uh, it probably didn't really shift until I became a teenager and you go through all those natural, you know, imbalances as a teenager that I, I began to kind of be, uh, I suppose a bit embarrassed by everything that I had achieved. I didn't want to stand out anymore. And, and, uh, you know, and I sort of buried that for a long time, to be honest, I didn't really start to to uh, face those voices in my head until my late twenties, mid to late twenties, when I realized when I had enough people around me, 
including, you know, mentors, artists that I look up to that just kept saying, why are you not proud of your past? <laughs> you know, you should be using your name when you're out there. And, and yeah, I suppose that advice came at a, at a, a, a very, yeah, just the perfect time enough for me to want to challenge all that. Yeah. I remember you were on Steve Byers, I'm sure, actually. That's quite a uh, funny uh, interview. So, hey, um, just going back to your uh, songwriting, um, you know, process, like, your lyrics are very poetic, right? I mean, I think they're very poetic. Um, so what comes first, really? Do you write the lyrics first or do you write the music the, the great around the lyrics? Yeah, I, it's a bit of both. Uh, I think with this album, it was, um, yeah, I think with this album, it was it was mainly a lyrical concept. You know, it might be just a phrase. I'll be walking around, you know, doing the groceries or going for a walk along the water or something like that. And just a concept will come to mind and I'll quickly just note it in my phone. And, and as much as what that initial creative spark, you know, gives me. And then, uh, and then I'll just kind of put it to bed. And it's not until I get into the studio that I'll come up with a riff or a chord progression or a melody. And then I'll go back through my, my notes and see what, what aligns with the spirit of my, of the groove or the, the, the chord progression that I've come up with. Uh, sometimes like uh, say man on fire, uh, rock and blues song, up tempo, uh, comfort zones was another one. I would say probably more the the bangers, like the, the ones that are, are, uh, are just kind of good rock blues songs or uh, like fundamentally they generally come from the groove and the, and the music first. And then I, and then I just, I just stop and I'm like, okay, what's a concept that would suit this? And um, and then and then the lyrics will follow the music. So, yeah. cool. hey. hey, this may be a lead to a obvious answer to most artists anyway, but you might be different. Do you feel more comfortable performing at the um, MCG and Sydney across seven nights, i.e., Till Swift, or more comfortable performing at the Blackdown RSL, for example? <laughs> oh yeah, good question. You know what I would, I mean, they're very, they're two very extreme, um, uh, situations. If I had to pick, cause both are very uncomfortable for me. Um, I would probably say I'd be more comfortable playing. Yeah. The MCG. Uh, oh. I, I didn't realize that until, um, I, so when I, when I started back again, after that big period of taking time off, I was actually playing really intimate size venues and I still play intimate size venues. It wasn't until I ended up scoring a festival gig. And then recently I supported Kaleo and where we're playing the Enmore theater and uh, the power station in New Zealand, you know, to two, 3000 people that I was like, wow, this, I really feel at home on here more at home here than what I do at those intimate gigs. I don't know why. I think the intimacy can be really uh, almost a bit too potent sometimes because you can look into the eyes of everybody and it's sort of, it's almost like playing in front of your family. I'm way more nervous. I'd be way more nervous playing in front of family and friends. Um, and then the size of the crowd, eventually after you, I've, the biggest crowd I played in front of is, is about 90,000 people. And that was when I performed at the Paralympic opening ceremony. And uh, what I realized is that 300, 400, 500 people, you know, it all kind of blends in. As soon as you get to probably maybe one to 2,000 up, the crowd is no longer a group of people. It's an entity. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an energy um, mass. And then you can play all the way up to tens of thousands of people. To me, there's not really a, a huge difference between 3000 and maybe there's probably another little spike at, at about the 10,000 mark. And then, and then it's another, but it's all energy. It's for, for me, it's just all energy upwards. As soon as you're in the room with people, you can see their eyes, you can see their face, you can see how bored they are or whatever it is. <laughs> it's that's different. They're not, they're people. <laughs> So finally, um, you have to, you've got tour coming up from July the seventh, uh, country Australia. So what can we expect from the tour? 
Yeah, the tour itself, I mean, obviously we're playing uh, as many of the new songs as we can. It's a, it's not a full band set up, although it's very electric and it's dynamite at times. I've got a, a, a sort of a more unique three-piece set up with a, another guitarist, um, some beats, uh, I got a Swiss Army knife on the left of me, which is like he plays percussion and and uh, trumpet and you know a few other instruments. All three three of us obviously sing, and uh, yeah, I mean I I I play all of the songs in a similar format to what I did with when I created Demons, which was I string them together with with stories, and you know whether it's you know from my past for nostalgia reasons or stuff you know from today, whether it's you know sharing some of the things I'd learned through mental health challenges or, you know, some funny moments with there's lots of light and shade. I mean, I haven't seen anybody walk out, walk out crying yet. So. <laughs> Nathan, it's such a pleasure man, to have a chat with you, man. Thank you so much for your time. I know that you'd rather yeah. be in the surf at Bondi Beach right now, mate, but you know what? Thank you so much, mate. <laughs> My pleasure. I appreciate the time, mate. Take care. We have a beer when we come first, all right? What's that, sorry? We have a beer, mate. When you come first, have a drink. Yes, absolutely. Keen. <laughs> See you, mate. Cheers.